Hello, welcome to Dungeon Dwellers Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today we're reviewing the 1980 horror mystery horror movie, uh, The Changeling, directed by Peter Medek, starring George C. Scott as John Russell, Trish Van Devere as Clara Norman. I almost thought I heard Tara Norman <laughs> when she said her name. I was like, what? Um, and Melvin Douglas as Senator Joe Carmichael, which I was like, why is there a senator in this movie? <laughs> it's like, uh, that's where we, the mystery part of the movie plays in later. So the reason I watched this movie is because, um, I don't know, I was in the mood to watch some Exorcist movies, but couldn't find any online, and I'm too lazy to go to the store. <laughs> uh, and though, um... Um, some, you know, some of my hard, hard-earned money <laughs> on uh, old horror movies. So I decided I would go, I would Google see if there's any um, George C. Scott horror movies on uh, YouTube. And like, uh, there's this horror channel that I go to where I watch horror, old horror movies on called uh, Newcastle After Dark. You get these two guys who try try to do the horror host uh thing which i really enjoy because then as you're watching the movie what usually once in the beginning and the middle of the end the horror hosts show up and they tell you a little bit about the movie apparently the movie was written by this playwright musician called russell hunter who actually the, the movie was based off a true story his life where he moved into this old house in Chicago. Not Chicago. Was it Chicago? or De- Yeah. No, it was Denver, Colorado, I think. I think I heard them say... Co- <coughs> I think I heard them say Chicago, but I think it was um, Denver, Colorado. Well, according to Wikipedia, it was uh, uh, Denver, Colorado. Where he uh, was living at this house where... Um, uh, it was haunted by this kid who wanted him to uh, ex- find his dead body and expo- ex- expose some politician or whatever, right? So, like, the I'm getting ahead of myself in the movie. Basically, you have this guy who's a widower. His kid and wife died in a car, kind of like a car accident. They were hit by a truck. And uh, he moved... Um, to where does this movie take place again? It's like it's in Vancouver. It's the movie shot in Vancouver. This movie gets uh, labeled as a Canadian horror movie, even though like the writer is not Canadian, the director is not Canadian. He's like h- h- some kind of Hungarian. The stars aren't Canadian, so it's like how is this a Canadian horror movie when all when uh, everybody's pretty much not like either American. Or you got the one Hungarian guy, but whatever. It, because it's shot in Canada, people call like Americans call it a Canadian horror movie. Apparently, um, Martin Scorsese, this is his favorite horror movie. Also, I thought the the movie was very cool. It's very it has this the first half of the movie is very sad and has this old gothic kind of. If you ever watched like 1950s or like old like horror movies it has that kind of gothic feel to it um and, and apparently this movie inspired a lot of uh of horror movies because of its seance scene which is in a bunch of other movies like the exorcist even sam raimi's drag me to hell uh which i wish sam raimi would do would do more horror movies uh, but like I don't know, I guess he lo- he loves being a producer nowadays. Uh, how about you produce some good shit, <laughs> Sam Raimi, and direct again? Uh, yeah. So like yeah, I thought George C. Scott was great. The whole the whole who done it murder mystery that takes place in the second half of the movie uh, I thought was good. Um, I didn't I wasn't I didn't really find the movie that scary because nowadays as an adult. I find, like, you know, real-world shit scary, not so much horror movies, which is a shame. Uh, Though I thought their portrayal, 
Because I've had, like, fucking ghost experience m myself. Um, one, one of the things that happens when you're, like, when you have a ghost fuck with you is, like, you feel the, this, like, um, rush of wind blowing at you coming from nowhere. And that's in the finale of the movie, which I thought was great. I also thought the movie, um... I thought the, 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 the sound mixing for the movie was good. The whole seance scene where you have the, the psychic like drawing, doing the auto writing thing where she's writing down what the ghost is saying. And then like George C. Scott uh, has this big ass fucking um, sound recorder which, which like takes up this, this, it's so huge it takes up this entire fucking table. Like he he uh, he recorded the scene on to listen back to it, and then you he you hear the ghost talking. I thought was um, really uh, cool. Though it's like the ghosts, um, they do what they and like a lot of horror movies and like uh, movies where they have like uh, ghost kids. They it's obviously a woman voice acting trying to sound like a like a creepy kid or something. Um, also, I should mention, if you're not a fan of kids, if you're a parent and you're not a fan of kids getting killed in movies, um, there, there is, like, a brutal, like, um, like, a kid gets drowned in the movie. You also have the wife and kid getting hit by a truck. But yeah, I, I thought this movie was more, like, um, w once the second half of the movie starts, it gets, it, it, it gets more, um, interesting. Like, you got the whole horror mystery who done it uh going on uh and like you had the whole thing where like it like the like what happens in a lot of horror movies where like they have to find um sorry in a lot of ghost horror movies where they have to find the dead body and put the body to rest and and they think oh that's gonna put the once they do that the ghost is gonna leave everybody home nope <laughs> This ghost is pissed and is out for blood. And, like, uh, the, the finale, even though it's, like, an old horror movie, I thought was good. Um, I, I can't wait to check out uh, Exorcist 3, because I hear that movie is going to be really... That also stars George C. Scott is also really good. And that's why I had to turn off halfway from Brother Media's... Uh, review of it because like they, they love to spoil the fuck out of movies dude and i'm like yeah i'm just gonna watch it myself <laughs> and review it here so if i get, had to give this movie a rating i would say it's a 7 out of 10 uh it's it's pretty atmospheric and a lot of the movie takes place uh during the day so it's like you don't really have to watch this movie at night uh, which I didn't, because <laughs> I, I, I have shit to do. I have uh, uh, live streams where I have to clout chase <laughs> and shit. Yeah, so I thought, the, yeah, I thought the movie was good. Uh, I, I can't wait to check out more horror movies. And like, uh, obviously, if you haven't like, um, if you haven't, uh, aren't subscribed to Newcastle After Dark, check out their channel. Um, they. It's a lot of uh, old 70s and 80s horror movies, but the the, the, mo the movies they have are pretty good. They love to give you some neat facts about the movie. And uh, they always, on Halloween, they love to do the double feature, where they review, sorry, where they showcase two horror movies on Halloween. So make sure to check those guys out. And also, we do have... Um, we do take re requests on what to on what to review, and uh, even like um, comic books and and manga, we also review that. So, all right, peace.